Welcome back, everybody. This is episode number eight of The Whole Truth for the week of 11 November 2013. It's good to see you guys again. On with the news. As usual on the show, everything that I talk about during this episode will be posted in the info down below so you can click the direct links and go and see these things for yourself in full resolution. RobertSpaceIndustries.com recap. We had a work in progress post for a gallery of the Idris deck. We got eight pictures, uh, five of them were new, three of them we saw last week. There was also a post that stated that Star Citizen will include support for AMD's new Mantle Graphics API. They stated on that post that it's a technology that promises to significantly increase the graphical power of games. Uh, the graphical power of games. I don't know what that means exactly. It doesn't sound very specific. I guess we'll find out later on. I haven't really looked into the tech details of AMD's Mantle API yet myself, so we'll find out later. There's also a new lore post with some flavor text called Astro Armada Ship Dealerships. Uh, it's in the theme of a commercial script for a campaign called Your Time. It's basically marketing ships to consumers within the game world. Uh, I love these little flavor posts. Uh, they add a ton of stuff to the living world of Star Citizen. It makes it very interesting and it sort of fleshes out the whole idea of this living galaxy for us. Uh, it makes a lot of sense to keep doing these and I hope that they keep doing them. Also on the official website we get a chance to meet Mr. Daniel Craig. No, not the James Bond actor. Uh, this guy's an animator and he works with the mocap hardware. Uh, there's a nice Q&A on there if you'd like to go and find out more about the Star Citizen team. And also, uh, during Wingman's Hangar this week, they had him on the show and interviewed him. And he wore like a weird looking mocap helmet thing where they capture facial expressions with it. So check that out, it's pretty cool. There's also some new physical goods available in the form of some official patches. We're talking like patches you, show, you sew onto your clothing. I think there's five or six patches. The whole set is $31 or you can buy them for $7 each. They're listed with a limited number of supply left, and last time I checked, it was in the 300 to 500 piece range. So grab them quick before they're gone. Uh, I grabbed two sets for myself, one for me and one for a friend. I'm a bit of a sucker for collecting things like that, so they got me. There's a new lore builder again this week. This one's issue number four, and it's all about the Seda Ball. We have some clarifications about the intent of this lore series, as well as some detailed histories written by some of the citizens. You can also see a list of the names of people you can also see a list of the names people came up with for the championship tournaments or games as well as some names for what would be professional teams. Uh, most importantly, there's a section to vote on your favorites on the page. So get over there and do your citizenly duty by influencing what our lore is going to be based on. We got a Veterans Day Hornet upgrade offer this week. CIG is giving us a way to purchase a cool skin for any Hornet model. And 50% of those proceeds go directly to an organization that supports veterans. The skin is an F7A military hornet skin and its cost is $20. The offer ended at midnight Pacific Standard Time on 11 November 2013. Um, I snatched one of these up myself. I'm a vet. I like to support our vets and this just gave me an excuse to spend more money on the Star Citizen website. Alright, let's move on to the Wingman's Hangar Recap. First up on the Wingman's Hangar Recap, Eric did one of his little head cam things again where he puts on this hard hat with a camera on it and a bright light and he walks around the office and kind of details what people are doing or spies on people, looks in on people. He ran into some of the devs and they discussed a style guide and we got to see a few shots of the computer monitor with a layout that they use. They showed us an interesting shot of the Banu, the humans, the Vandul, the Xi'an and there were a couple of blank spots for some races known as the Kurthak and the Taveran. Moving on to forum feedback recap. We had a couple of good questions this week in the forum feedback recap, so let's just get on with that. Can we have a clan tag, decal, or logo on the ship's hull? Rob said, there's two different sides of it. One, we are working on right now on a new decal and paint system, so the technology should be there. But then it's just a matter of how we set up an approval process for that kind of decal because you know people will try to sneak in some stuff that shouldn't be there. Could we physically fly from system to system without a jump drive if we want to? Also, can we jump out into the middle of nowhere or do we have to jump to predefined jump paths? Rob answered and said, well, here's the thing. These systems are very, very far apart, so the jump gates are necessary. Otherwise, you'd be flying for hundreds of years. As far as jumping into random locations, no. Jump gates go to one place in each direction. Eric then said, and we're not rendering the dark matter between each system. I guess we could procedurally generate dark matter, which is not interesting. Would I be able to use the constellation in my asteroid hangar? Rob Anson has said the asteroid hangar is designed to be at least as big as the deluxe hangar, so it can hold any of the ships that are in the deluxe. 
I was curious if there were any plans to introduce unarmed ships, especially civilian vessels for purely mercantile transportation or exploration purposes. Rob says, so shuttles and stuff? We're definitely going to have shuttles. Wandering around an explorer vessel with no guns? Sitting duck. They're not the first on the schedule. Right now we're working on things that are more important, which are the ships for the players that they have already pledged for and ships for Squadron 42. There's a shuttle involved in Squadron 42, I believe. If the second seat of the Avenger will be removed in the player version, will we be able to access the cockpit through the cargo hold and vice versa? And then they show a little fan video of this that somebody made where they actually cut away a section so that you could walk from the rear cargo hold of the Avenger into the pilot seat. And uh, Rob said something like that, something like the fan video he was referring to. I'm wondering if we'll see any freelancer variants before the LTI cutoff. Eric said, unfortunately the answer is no. When the variants come out, you will be able to buy a badge or an upgrade for any type of ship and your LTI will transfer from the hull. So if you had a freelancer sitting there and we bring out a variant for it that you really want, you can buy the upgrade on that particular hull that has LTI and it will transfer over. Rob said, maybe we can tell you how many variants there will be before the deadline. They're not really sure about that though. Uh, so basically there's been a lot of conversation about this on the forums. You basically have to own the hull with LTI before the cutoff to get LTI with any of the variants that come out later. And the only way you'll be able to do that is to have the hull and then purchase the upgrade of the variant later on. So you won't be able to get LTI with a freelancer after November the 26th or any ship. So keep that in mind when you're out there buying stuff. If you're thinking you're going to want a freelancer variant and you want LTI, get the variant or get the freelancer now. Can the cargo hold option on the Ghost Hornet be applied without sacrificing any of its stock stealth equipment? Rob answered and said the cargo hold goes in the ball turret hardpoint. So since the Ghost currently doesn't have anything in the ball turret mount, it's just a lid, they can put the cargo hold in there. Now, the only cost stealth wise is your profile increases slightly with that cargo hold on top. But other than that, no, it wouldn't take away any of your other equipment. Will cargo be mass and size? For example, will some cargo need a constellation or bigger due to the size of the load even if it only weighs one ton? Rob says yes, the cargo descriptions on the ship stats are giving you a general idea on how much that ship can add to its mass before it begins to struggle, but the volume matters as well. Will there be cargo containers for livestock? Rob says, hauling weird space critters? I don't know. It depends on if the artists want to build weird space critters and animate weird space critters. Fish hauling? They'd have to rely on the system that you also use to breathe in your ship. When will we be able to see the upgraded ships in the hangar? I and probably many others can't melt my package as I would lose my physical items otherwise. Rob said, we're working on a hangar update that will allow you to see the upgrade packages applied to ships. And we've known about this for a while. They've stated many times they are working on a way to apply those updates for us. Can companies on existing planets go broke? Rob answers and says, yes. The economy is meant to be a simulation. So if they can't get what they need or they can't sell what they produce, then eventually, like any other business, they're going to go under. So you'd have a nice cobwebby factory building sitting around for someone to buy, maybe. Will I be able to play with my friends in the Persistent Universe without having to go separate ways on two different servers? Can I play with the American friends in the Persistent Universe and have dogfights with people from EU servers so my ping doesn't impact how I am able to fight? Eric answered and said this is basically to be determined. Essentially that's why we're doing the dogfighting multiplayer. That's why we're doing dogfighting things. We're going to work with you guys to find out just how many people can dogfight and where and what server what lag times you need to effectively have a dogfight, and that's some of the stuff you guys are going to help us figure out. So whether you can be in England and then have a friend in Australia that may not work because of the physical distances, it's still to be determined based on the testing we'll be doing going forward. And Rob said some of the less ping intensive stuff like the social stuff might work across the pond, but dogfighting is a lot different. And then Eric basically summarizes and says that Chris has always said this is going to be a skill based game. And they don't want people with lag or without lag to have an advantage or a disadvantage in any situation. Will we be able to purchase Star Citizen concept art, such as Mr. Elijah's, for use as in-game decoration via a banner or poster of sorts to hang in our hangars or some kind of personal apartment? Also, might we see concept art lithographs or prints sold at some point? Rob said, the hangar decorations. That's an interesting idea. We're always looking for new things to put in there. There are things we are working on that are leading up to expanding the hangar. We might eventually put some concept stuff in there. 
Eric then says, we've talked a bit about people being allowed to put their own artwork in there. Also, what's happening with that is, any type of personalization to your hanger at this point, we're waiting on what we call client-side persistence because right now, the way it works is you log in, you put your account name in, it goes to the database, grabs your data, and it populates your hanger based on what ships you have and what stuff you have on your account. Eventually, we're going to have it to where you can move stuff around, probably through the mobile glass or some other interface. We're going to allow you to set your hanger and personalize it. Right now, every time you log off, it just vapors. We need client-side persistence. That is coming. If you want anything to be sold, like any of this cool artwork or physical goods, put that in the forums. If you don't pick a question someone sent in for a specific episode, is there any point in asking the same question for next week's show and the one after that? Eric said, video questions, there's no need to repost those because we grabbed them. But you can repost your questions. It takes us a while to get through them. Some questions are so big they need Chris to answer them. That's generally where a lot of, our, of the Nexus or com links come from. Chris will take those and write a big post. If we don't get to your question here, you'll probably get it answered eventually. Other than no LTI, what would you have done differently if you had to do it all over again? Eric said, I'm not sure we'd change anything. And Rob said, I wish I'd been here sooner, that's all. To defend our station, can we add weapons platforms, say about 50, to welcome the enemy if no players are defending it? Rob says, we're still designing some of the mechanics of personalizing locations. As far as defending it, you'll certainly be able to have your friends there or hire NPCs, and maybe we'll let you float some platforms out there on the perimeter. You don't want to clog up an instance with a bunch of defense platforms so no ships can get in there. Will we see star systems with different colored suns that also change the color palette for the whole system in the landing locations? Will the sun color influence the color of vegetation in the landing zones? Rob says, yes, one of the things we do when we're defining a system is talk about the star. So we're aware of that. We're aware of the different colors and we keep that in mind. And of course, we have all these experts that do lighting and effects and everything. So you put a star out there that's a different color, you betcha it's going to change the lighting. Are you currently looking into any multi-factor authentication technologies for the website or client authentication, i.e. tokens, biometric, etc.? And then a creeper dev popped up behind, I don't know his name, and he said yes, and then he disappeared. And uh, Eric actually referred to him as creeper dev at the end. Will different weapon manufacturers have different colored shots for their energy weapons? Rob answered and said, it might not be just based on the manufacturer, but yeah, we're going to have a lot of variations in the effects for the weapons, shields, all of it. You're going to have some idea of what's coming at you. Mostly the different technologies change the shape of the effect as well as the color. I like this a lot. When I've PvP'd in previous MMOs, it's important to know what your enemy is doing. You can look at their skill set and tell what class they are and things like that. This is very important for PvP in any kind of game. Have you made any decisions on how we'll be able to communicate in game, e.g. integrated voice communication or avatar based webcam systems? Rob says there's still some decisions to be had on that. We've discussed VOIP, we've talked about live driver where you can see your face talking, so your avatar will be able to look somewhat like you, plus we've also got the face scanning technology. And that's it for the forum feedback recap, moving on to the MVP recap. All right, the MVP of the week on the Star Citizen forums, which is done by Ben Lesnick on the Wingman Tanger show, is a very interesting one this week. Um, it's called Star Citizen, the Fan Musical by Lady Caterpillar and High Admiral Blue Six. These two definitely have a lot of enthusiasm for the game. I don't even quite know how to explain it, so just go watch the video and see for yourself. Uh, they basically use Dr. Horrible sing-along music and they kind of put their own words to it about Star Citizen. And if nothing else, it's fun. After the MVP recap, they also interviewed Daniel Craig, which we talked about a little earlier. I just wanted to make a note about his, uh, the mocap helmet that he shows, that, they, that he talks about. Um, it's very odd looking. They also stated that they made those with a 3D printer. So man, those 3D printers. I don't even know what to say about those things. Those things are kind of scary to me, but really cool at the same time. All right, I'm doing a new segment thing today called Other News, and uh, it's still going to be Star Citizen related or something in the same vein. And we're going to start doing this on a weekly basis as long as there's some other news to report on. So here we go. Joysticks. People are asking questions all the time about the SciTech X52 and wondering why they're having a hard time finding it on the market. And the reason is, is that they are releasing a new one called the X55. There's a reveal video down below that you guys can check out. 
And if anybody gets one of these things ahead of time, you know, let me know what you think about it. Give me a review. Maybe we'll feature it on The Whole Truth because I know people are constantly looking for what joystick to get into for this game. And on that note, if you're looking for a game to practice in before this game comes out, you should check out a game called Diaspora. Diaspora is a free game that's built on the old Free Space 2 code. It features Newtonian physics and is probably one of the closest things you're going to be able to play to get that space flight sim feel. On top of that, it's a Battlestar Galactica themed game with a basic storyline. You'll be fighting Cylons in your Viper as well as piloting Raptors. This game is extremely amazing considering it's free. It took the developers like four years to make this game and it's always been free. And uh, the age of the title is absolutely no detriment to this game at all. If you want to get out there and see how complicated uh, sixth off in space with Newtonian physics is, get out there and check out this game. Rock Paper Shotgun released an article where they highlight some info from Chris Roberts about Star Citizen and Squadron 42 specifically. Chris said, If I was doing a wing commander at EA, Squadron 42 is going to be that. There's also an interesting section where Chris talks about the meat and bones of the dialogue and the relationships with your wingmen. He said, The onboard, the ship stuff is almost like a relationship manager as opposed to a bunch of set cutscenes. Uh, this is a must read for anybody that's interested in finding, more about, finding out more about Squadron 42. There's a few other things in there, tidbits from Chris, uh, so go and check that out. Also, the final week leading up to the end of LTI, which happens on November the 26th, if you're not familiar with what that is, LTI is lifetime insurance. It's a small bonus that insures your, the whole of your ship for the lifetime of the game if you've purchased before a certain time. Well, that deadline is November 26th, and there will be no more LTI for anyone. You will not be able to purchase it again. Uh, the week leading up to that, they intend to post a schedule on the 15th regarding limited edition ships that they're going to offer for sale. So you're going to know what's for sale and when before the time comes to buy them. And Ben Lesnick also said that uh, he would go ahead and warn us that there may be a surprise or two on the 26th. So this comes from a forum post where Ben Lesnick said this. I've linked it below for verification. So if you're looking forward to picking up one of these ships, uh, just make sure you keep an eye out on the 15th for that update. All right, moving on to the r slash star citizen post of the week. This week it goes to, I'm going to try to say this right, Ivilitaris, uh, the first three letters are capitalized, I'm not sure how you pronounce that, uh, for the simplified guide to ship and pledge selection. Not only is this an excellent guide, but there's also a lot of good information within the thread as well as the updates being made to the guide to match the current state of the game. Thanks a lot for putting in the effort to do that, Avilitaris. I really appreciate that, man. If we could use all the effort and time that's been put in by devoted Star Citizen fans to speed up production of this game, it would have been released six months ago. Seriously, the community growing up around this game is just awesome. So keep it up. Keep on putting the effort into it, and uh, it's making me proud to be a part of the community, and that's a, that's a first in a long time in any kind of online gaming anything. So we've come to the end of another episode, and I would just like to say one more time, thank you to the community for all of the support and giving me a worthwhile reason to keep doing this. We hit 4,000 subscribers on the YouTube channel this last week, and I just want to say welcome to everyone to the Romantics community. We have a small community on Twitch TV as well. They're all great people. We get along. Everybody plays games together. The chat is awesome. And YouTube is just doing the same thing along with the r slash star citizen community. So I really appreciate that, guys. You guys have been awesome. If things keep going the way that they are, we're thinking about producing a couple of shows based around Star Citizen. Uh, we may do some live action uh, web series type stuff at some point. And I've also got uh, two ideas for other shows on top of the whole truth to fill some other needs out there in the community. So keep an eye out. As soon as we get big enough to justify it, me putting aside the time to do it, those things are going to start happening. So uh, thanks again for the support, everybody. And I'll see you guys again next Monday on the whole truth.